dramaturgy is what you do. Do you describe what you do with a new script, working on a new script, author, workshop, through to production? Do you describe that as dramaturgy, or how do you describe what you do? I suppose now I describe it as dramaturgy because that's the common term, and that's the only way to express that. But uh, I, to me, it's it, dramaturgy came in the 90s as a really a term, or late 80s, and uh, but prior to that, it was just uh, directing. Uh, and developing a play, I guess, uh, but in the more formal world came dramaturgy. I don't know really how dramaturgy is really different from directing, except the person's not a director, so it's more pertinent to dramaturges than it is to me. As a director, it seems like um, a whole experience, you know. At some point in a new play, wha at whatever point I enter in, uh, it becomes a dramaturgical or play development process of creating a play. and. Uh, uh, so I've never really seen it as a distinct difference. I have called it now because that's a, a common term for it that people seem to understand. So sure. <laughs> is a play a story? Is a story a play? Uh, to me, and I'll go back to that. This that the play is uh, dialogue that creates a story, and but the story is the action between the people. And so it's really a story of action and allows, therefore, the director, the, 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 the designers, the, an action in time and space, and the actors to participate in creating the action. So it's ultimately the play, the, the words give you the basis to create the action. Um, and that may be, uh, the action being a physicalization of the words, a donning of a costume of the words, uh, sitting in a chair versus standing, uh, creating environments, creating pictures, creating blocking, creating props, whatever. All those things participate in the creation of the action, and the words are the first step into creating that action. Is the story in an Alice Munro story mm -hmm. the same as a story in a play? No. No, and I expressed think different ways. Yeah. I'm talking about what's the story that's being talked of, expressed in different forms. Are they different? Well, uh, I suppose they're not different. And uh, I think Alice Munro is a very complex play uh, writer, so it, nothing is simple in her plays. And if they are simple, it's because that's the point. They they mo they move to a simplicity, if you like. Um, uh, so I think with any good playwright or any good play that tries to match that, it wants that complexity. So in that way, they're similar. Um, in that way, they often, I think, you know, I think Alice Munro is, is a, no a short story writer, a novelist that's, you know, uh, tries to examine the inside of human beings and uh, tries to examine the contradiction in their behavior. And I think, again, contradiction is what we're all looking at in, in good theater. I think Shakespeare is a series of contradictions, contradiction after contradiction. I was just doing a session this morning with actors, and I was just saying, thesis, antithesis, thesis, antithesis. You're saying one thing, and you look at the other side, you say another thing, both hold true. Yes, you have a goal that you want to express you're in love, but you can barely say it. And yet you'll say, the, uh, well, if I was in love, I, I might be in love. I don't really think so, but yes, I am. Right. So you can actually say all, th all those three things, four things, in one sentence, um, in trying to say you're in love, but you can't actually say it. And I once read a Alice Miro talking about her relationship with her editor. And if her editor actually could see in the story the pivot point, as it were, in which mm -hmm. the story turned and went to its place, she would deliberately try to hide it. That, <laughs> that pivot point, she said, I never yeah. want the reader to know when they've walked through that pivot point. Do you do that? When I'm trying to think of you directing a play, uh, is that what you do as well? Because I think I'm actually, it? it's interesting, I think I try and pull the pivot point out so that people see the pivot point more. And I think that's what I mean by action, because it's constantly changing. But it may not be why it's changing, which may be what she means by the pivot point. But let the why be the investigation of the audience, because right. that's the detective story. I think UNESCO said all plays are detective stories. and. Uh, he's right. Hamlet's a detective story. Oedipus' detective story. Uh, it's all detecting something about the human condition or an investigation of the human condition and human behavior. So 
Sometimes it's on the simple level, like a murder mystery, and sometimes it's Hamlet. Um, you know. So when you're reading a new script or a, a, a you know, pile of scripts come to your mm -hmm. desk, they've gone through a pre-read, I gather. You don't read Typically, everything that comes to Tarragon? Yeah, no. So they've gone through a pre-read. When you re start reading those scripts, what do you look for? Do you have a, like, if by page 40, I'm not at a certain point, I don't know? I mean, is there something as mechanical as that, or is it all intuitive at this point? It's not very mechanical. I wish it were. <laughs> <laughs> page I wish five. I, yeah, I wish I could uh, do that. Um, so, and sadly, it's more intuitive, so I have to experience more of the play before I um, say yes or no to it or whatever. I do need to be surprised. I, I, I need to be think of something I hadn't thought of before. Sometimes I'm surprised by something that I've forgotten that comes back again. And uh, I do need to be surprised. And so I'm just going to repeat that. So I do need to be surprised. Sometimes I'm surprised by something I've forgotten. And I don't know why I've forgotten it, but the, the, the writing reminds me of something that surprises me, that this is back again in, in, the, in the zeitgeist or in the thinking. Um, uh, sometimes it's a surprise of form. You know, uh, when we worked on Glenn and there was four Glens playing one Glenn, that was a, a form surprise, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And for a while, that play in its dramaturgical process was going to be a little more biographical, a little bit more realism, uh, real scenes interacting, Glenn at the, at the deli, Glenn at a concert, and, and uh, as David took it further and further away from that, and in a way for me the surprise was, oh, these four people can talk to each other? And you know that the illogical thing, right? You can always imagine the character you play, the Puritan, looking back in his past, because he knows everything, which is his problem. <laughs> uh, so he looks back in his past, and he has to go back in his past to reinvestigate who he, where he's going to go in the future. But how does the, uh, the uh, prodigy see his future? Right, with this uh, unimaginable um, thing that people don't do, because how do you imagine yourself in the future? Well, you can probably, you know, now that we have stem cells, you can probably imagine how we're going to die. If it doesn't, uh, not by an accident, you can imagine you're going to have this illness and that illness, and you can predict the future. You can look into your own lives. You can look into your parents and go, gee, my dad had a bad knee. I have a bad knee. Hmm. Funny how my knee went bad. I shouldn't have run for 20 years. <laughs> I should have walked. <laughs>